Hello there and welcome to Vermin Hunters TV with me Cy Pitway. Today on the show myself and Davey are going to be showing you the results of the Sandville Field Sports Imp Mark II field review. Uh, and it's this rifle here. The rifle that the Imp Mark II is based on is the Virac HW99S, which in its own right is a great choice for target shooters and hunters alike. The Imp Mark II only comes currently in 22 calibre, but there are other variants available like the Jack Snipe in 20 calibre and the Snipe in 25 calibre. The visible barrel length is only 20.5 cm long and is made to special order by Virac for Sandwell Field Sports. The barrel is now screw cut by the Virac factory, leaving the barrel choke as a standard factory one. The barrel also comes fitted with the new Virac moderator. The overall length of the rifle from the butt pad to the end of the moderator is 111.5 cm long. The breech is engraved with the Imp Mark II emblem. The forestock is nicely checkered allowing for use in wet condition. The Virac logo is also engraved into the stock. The pistol grip is also heavily checkered giving the shooter a positive hold in the aim. The trigger unit is the world famous record unit that has been polished and tuned by Tony at Sandal to improve what is already considered by many as the best spring piston trigger unit in the world. The rifle sports an automatic safety catch that is engaged on the cocking of the rifle. The rifle can be decocked if the shooter requires by holding the barrel in the cock position and taking off the safety catch before engaging the trigger and slowly allowing the barrel and spring to move into its uncocked position. The top of the action has a long 11mm dovetail rail which allows for a vast array of scopes of all sizes to be fitted to the rifle. The stock comes with a nice rubber butt pad fitted as standard to help arrest the low recoil of the Imp Mark II. The internals of the rifle is where the big benefit over the standard rifle is really seen. In the case of the Imp Mark II the rifle internals have been cleaned and polished as well as correctly sized on a lathe and tuned. A newly developed paste lubricant which Sandville wished to keep a secret is also now used. This in turn removes much of the friction from the firing action making for just a gentle nudge at the shoulder when the rifle fires. In regards to the rifle's spring, Sandville used their own tried and thoroughly tested springs which are locally made of Swedish steel. In a recent test one of these springs were compressed for a 12 week period and then tested for power in a Vira HW80. The results pleasingly shown that the rifle was still able to produce full hunting power after the 12 week period. Lastly, Sandwell have informed me that they now incorporate some new procedures into the way that they tune their Imp Mark II. These procedures I have not been made privy to and so I do not wish to hazard any guess. So before we go out and do any actual accuracy testing I want to show you this. This is obviously the flat reach of the Imp Mark II and I've got two levels on there and you can see their level and I'm using the wheeler level system what I bought from America which allows you then to level the barrel as you can see and then if I come back again it also allows you to level the scope so now I know that the scope breech and barrel are all level and my scope is set up correctly. So you'll hopefully see behind me just here is the Sandal Field Sports Imp Mark II which is a 22 caliber rifle as we've already said uh, and to just over my right shoulder here is the cold wall chronograph, precision chronograph uh, and we're going to be using that chronograph to chrono this rifle and see how it's doing I will say the rifle's only just been tuned by Tony as you see here it's still actually got the uh, Lyrac sign on it or little tag on it whatever you want to call it uh, so it's come from the factory over to Tony who's obviously tuned it now it's not bedded in, it's probably going to need another three to 500 pellets through it. Now Tony said to use H&M Field Target Trophy, which are 14.66 or 14.7 grain. 
so Tony knows what he's talking about so that's what I'll be using now I haven't shot this yet and I'm hoping it's going to be in the tens because I like my uh, rifles to be around from around about 10.5, 10.6 up to early 11s. Uh, I find that that gives the rifle the, a really good mixture of really low recoil uh, and easy accuracy and plenty of power if you want to use it for hunting. Uh, so knowing Tony, uh, and Tony knows what I like, he's probably tuned it to uh, sort of like the high 10s, middle 10s because uh, he knows that that's what I like. So I'm interested to see what it is but we'll get on uh, and we'll shoot a str string through it now knowing that whatever results I get now it's going to get better once it's bedded in. Okay then, Sandwell Field Sports Impact Mark II pellets are straight out of the tin and then popped into my jacket pocket and I'll just pick them out one at a time. 5791 Five seven five for two. Five seven seven for three. Five seven four four. Five eighty for five. Five seven four for six. Five seven eight seven. Five eight one for eight. I let it recoil. Five seven four for nine. Five seven seven for ten, I believe. That's really, really uh, consistent for a rifle what's not bedded in uh, and you know, only just been tuned. I think that was 10. I'll just have another one just to make sure. So I don't know if I counted one, two, not enough. Five, seven, eight. We'll uh, see what that comes up to now. So then, I've got the results here uh, and they're quite pleasing. So, I actually did shoot 11 shots in the end. Uh, the highest was 581 feet per second and the lowest was 574. So over them 11 shots, it's only got a 7 feet per second total deviation over 11 shots, which is phenomenal for a rifle, what's nowhere near bedded in yet. And like I said, I'll need another 3 to 500 pellets through it, where it will settle down. Another point to note is, just to prove, I've still got the pellets in my pocket here, uh, they were taken straight from the tin, as I said earlier on when I was chronographing, straight from the tin, put into my pocket, so there wasn't weighed, there wasn't you know, measured. If I'd have weighed them and got 10 the actual same weight, I'd have known I'd have fired 10 because I'd only had 10 in my pocket, and these figures had have probably been even better. So it's a credit to already, before I even shoot it for accuracy, our good Tony's tuned it. Anyway, from them total 7 feet per second deviation over the 11 shots, that worked out of a shot to shot consistency of, get this, 0 0.63 feet per second. That shot to shot, that's absolutely phenomenal for a, like a, an unbedded in rifle. Anyway, I added all 11 shots up and divided them by 11 to give me an average, and the average was 577 feet per second. Uh, remember what I said at the start, I like from the middle tens up to sort of like the high 10s or you know 11 this worked out at 10.8 foot pounds so as I thought Tony's tuned this exactly to where he knows I like this will probably rise up a little bit over them three to five hundred pellets to early 11s maybe 11 foot pounds 11 one uh, probably 11 two maximum but hopefully it'll stay around about 11 11 one uh, it's going to be a phenomenal uh, rifle to test so I'm looking forward to the rest of it Right, what we're going to do now is shoot a, a larger string through the chrono and I've got my wife Laura helping and writing the figures down for me. Let's see how we get on. 580. 584. 
582. Five eighty three. Five eighty three. Tell me when I get to ten, twenty, and thirty, please. Five seventy seven. Five eighty four. Five seventy seven. Five seventy nine. Five eighty two. Five eighty two. Five eighty four. Five eighty one. It's super consistent. Isn't it? 575 578 These pellets are straight out of the tin and into my pocket as well 578 <laughs> 578 It's a jewel too that's up 580 577 577 578 578 577 how many is that? It's 24 580. This is amazing. It's not even better than. 583. 576. 581. 578. Last one, is it? Yep. That's it. 582. Right, that is good, isn't it? Right, what we'll do is we'll see, do all the calculations and come back on the camera. Okay then, so I've got the results here from that long string, 30 shots actually, uh, with the Sandal Field Sports Imp Mark II, using the H&N Field Target Trophy. So you saw when I did the uh, 10 or 11 shot string, it was uh, 7 feet per second, I believe. Uh, and now over the 30, it's only 9 feet per second. So it's good to show uh, this is a really consistent rifle, uh, even when it's not bedded in. Anyway, so over them 30 shots, the average feet per second worked out at 579.8 feet per second. Uh, you change that into foot-pounds, uh, and it's 10.9 uh, foot-pounds. Still really, really nice, over, even over the 30 shots. And if you convert those 30 shots uh, and that nine feet per second total deviation, it works out of actually a shot to shot consistency of only 0 0.3 foot per second. Uh, absolutely crazy. So, you know, this thing has got mega, mega potential because if it's any way as accurate as it is consistent, even when it's not bedded in, I can see it's slightly starting to bed in now because. Uh, between the seven feet per second and obviously the longer string, uh, the foot pounds is uh, is rose a little bit, averagely, uh, which it's supposed to do as it's bedding in. But yeah, this this is really good work, Tony. Really good work, and the proof's in the pudding. So I've got the Imp Mark II now, just about zeroed. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a check shoot, and I'll keep the camera actually on the target. Uh, and wherever the mean point of the group is, I'll adjust to get a fine zero. Hopefully it's not going to be too far out because last three shots I've done has basically been touching each other. Uh, and in this breeze today, that's pretty good.
happy with that so far, especially in this breeze. <laughs> Yes, sir. In Mark 2. I'm not even going to try shooting anymore. Not in this breeze, anyway. That's brilliant. What we will do is go and have a look at that uh, and see what size it is. What I can say is, if we didn't have this breeze, what we got today, uh, it's just gone still as I speak. But if we didn't have this breeze, uh, I reckon I could get that better. You can probably see in the trees in the background now. Uh, moving. Okay, I brought the target now and laid it flat on my bed with some stones hopefully stopping it from moving with the wind. And as I move closer you'll see I put a new 2.2 calibre pellet in the centre of the group to show you and give you an indication of the size of it. Now you'll also see that the shape of the group is a bit weird uh, and a lot of that is card tear. So what's actually happening is the pellet's going through the card, it's immediately hitting the metal back plate of the target holder uh, and mushrooming causing the target paper to uh, to tear like that so in actual fact that group's probably smaller uh, than it's actually showing there uh, and if there wasn't any metal back plate in you just have a pellet hole there where the pellet's gone through so you can see it's slightly high so I'm going to bring it down one click uh, and then I think that will be on Right, I've moved back as far as I can without encroaching too much into the apple orchard but I'll zoom in and this is 46 meters or 50 yards you'll see there's a shoot and see target at the top I'll be aiming for and the impact will be low so let's see how we get on I'm not expecting pellet on pellet because of the uh, breeze but it'll just give us some idea of how it's grouping at this distance I think that went straight through the same hole. Oh my god, that's a three shot group at 50 yards, making a one hole group that's straight off as well. Right, I'm just going to take the camera off the tripod. Uh, just to show you, obviously, here you can see the apple trees, the apple trees are in the orchard, okay, and a lot of the birds and that come in and they actually cause damage in these trees. You can see, I can't go any further back because there's branches coming down and I don't think the landowner, I'd like to have gone through there a little bit further, but these branches here, I don't think the landowner would like me to move them and start bending them, but here we go. Imp Mark 2. Right, we're down at the target end now. You can see I was aiming it up here, at that red dot there, and it's full of shots dropped low. Looks like paper's coming off, that was good timing. So, luckily, uh, it looks like I managed to get them three shots off when the breeze had died down, otherwise, the fall of shot had gone left or right of the obviously the vertical. But I can see in there, I can see two pellets there touching each other actually stacks up, stacked up on top of each other uh, and I think one of them went a little bit higher here but for the, that distance in this weather I'm really uh, happy with that with a uh, spring piston rifle in regards to 5p piece you can see the 5 pence piece covers it so even with that little bit of tear at the top from paper tear because this board is really hard the, uh, the group still is covered by the old five pence piece so that is really tiny uh, and I believe if I'm honest people with a PCP shooting at 50 yards in this weather would be happy to have a 2-2 group like that 
So go for an easy one first. Give it a little bit of wind, right hand side. One up. No problem. I'm only at 27.3 yards. But they are getting smaller and it fits the breeze and the wind. Try that small one on the bottom left, uh, bottom right. Yes. See how many shots it takes me to hit the uh, small one, which is the uh, smallest one on there, which is on the top right. I think that's about 10 mil. I've got to get the wind perfect. Oh, first shot. There you go. That's not bad. Yep, that'll do me. Right, I've moved my plywood target backstop back to the back fence and that's saying 51 meters on my laser which is 56 yards which according to my calibration which I did before I came should be around about four mil dots on times nine so I'm gonna see where this lands What about that? That was bang on. Four mil dots I gave. And I hit it near enough center, central with imp mark two. Right, now that I've proved that my calibration, what I worked out before I came out is smack on, like almost hitting dead center on that shoot and see. I'm gonna have a go at this spinner set what I put on the back fence. There's a field behind it, it's a huge field, massive, full of crops, all belonging to the landowner, so the pellet will not leave the boundary of the permission. There we go, first shot. Lovely, I really do like chair gun, I swear by it. Right, I'm going to zoom in again to the 56 yard part on the fence where the target is. But this time, we're going to try and push the rifle to its limits. So instead of shooting the bottom right target, I'm going to try and shoot the top right, which is the second smallest spinner on the tree. And it's only 12 millimeters in diameter. So 12 millimeters at 56 yards would be a test for a PCP, especially in this breeze. So let's see how the Imp Mark II handles it. I'm not expecting to hit it in one shot because that would be incredible. But if I can hit it within three, I'll be really, really happy. What I will say is it's very stiff, it's rusted. So if I hit it, it won't move much at all. But hopefully you'll see it on camera. Yo, first shot. <laughs> what did I say? That would be incredible. <laughs> that was incredible. I'm really, really pleased with that. Just take the camera out there. Uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. I, I, th I knew I could do it probably within three with this wind. But one, something 12 mil, and I'll show it you in a little while. We'll walk up there. Is is amazing and. You can see, sat still on the bed next to me, didn't mark two. Right, I've walked to the back fence now where the spinner is on the fence, uh, and I was that shocked that I actually hit that in one shot uh, with that in mark two. Once I'd zoomed out and turned the camera off, I had another shot, and believe it or not, I hit it again. Second shot, so two on the trot, but didn't film it, so that was, you know, a shame because that would have been great to show you. 
spot. I'm just going to spin the viewfinder around and bring the camera closer. You'll see here's the spinner and you'll see there's one hit just there and one hit just above it. But for 56 yards in that breeze I'm really happy. And that was the other one we were shooting earlier on. What I will do now is I'm going to take this spinner down and put it on the flat ground and we'll get some uh, ways of measuring it. I think I've got a ruler and I'll show you the actual size. So here. Hopefully the camera's showing that. I can't really see. The viewfinder's a bit bright. But that actually is 12 millimetres. So to give you some idea what 12 millimetres is in regards to something we know, that's a drawing pin there sat on it. So David's going to have a shoot now with the Imp Mark II. Uh, it's obviously zeroed for my eyes. He might be there a while in this wind. Yeah. I'm joking. We don't shoot in high winds. Is it? At 27 yards is that? It's just the wind is really tricky. Yes, that was a good one. That was uh, one of the middle small ones. Nice one. Probably had yeah, the wind in the camera. It's been like a pain all day, as you saw from watching me. Hitting it, Are you still having to give it a little bit of wind. Yes. Crazy, isn't it? And that's only 27 yards, isn't it? If you hear this hit metal, then it's uh, three out of three. Now that was the top right-hand one at eight mil. That was not bad, is it? Huh? No. Twenty. Seven. Twenty-seven point three yards. Yeah. Uh, I'll spin round. We can see. We just put a board behind it, so he stands out a lot easier for him. Shot, mate. Nice. There is still movement at the back, you can see it on the trees. Oh, that was a good shot. That was a good shot for a little one like that in that breeze. Always do that to me. <laughs> he's well, whinging, he's just... Target, uh, you don't film it. He's just took a shot at the uh, top right hand one. Was standing. And <laughs> and hit it, but I won't film it. Oh, oh, that was you the. Didn't uh, hit that one either. No, I, d I didn't hit that one. That was a good one. It's just. Now I filmed you at shooting it. It's just hit the top left hand one. I hit that earlier on today, but I, that's, I never hit it at super long distance. That's just 10 mil, that one. Yes! Got it on camera this time for you, mate. That's two out of two on the uh, small 10 mil. Yeah. That's, that's not bad then, is it? It's not even zeroed for your eye either. Spinner. Right, I'll zoom in then. He's going to have a go at the uh, drawing pin behind the big spinner to see how close it is between our eyes. It's obviously zeroed for my eye, not his. Oh, oh that's smack on then, mate, for both yeah. of us. So it hasn't. I mean, I don't know. That must it must have been something to do with our diets, I guess, and our fat heads. <laughs> <laughs> been a mill dot apart before. Yeah, well that, that's brilliant. So that's a drawing pin in one shot. Yeah, we're happy with that. Yep. That drawing pin must be about 11 mil, I think, because I put a drawing pin on the 12 mil bit and the tiny bit stuck out the edge. 
So it must be 11, about 11, 10 or 11 mil and you tin it in one shot. That's pretty good. All right, I'm on a different permission now, just round the corner from the last one. Uh, and the guy's got about seven acres of land. And you can see I put the target tree up there. And that's now at 60 yards. So I'm going to put me back against steel fence uh, and have a go with the Imp Mark II. And see if I can uh, hit one of these spinners. First shot. I'll just uh, bring the camera around. I'm a bit closer now. In the bipod, that tripod. So, yeah. just my back against this fence. So, what I found with this gun is, I don't know why, it's the easiest gun I've ever shot. Sitting. No, I don't usually. Uh, do well and I'll never really zero from a sitting position I just find it difficult unless I've got something against my back but a couple of days ago I uh, zeroed this sitting just like this as if I was going to be static shooting uh, and since then it just don't miss I really don't like that there one shot you know that's not me like zooming in zooming out keep zooming in zooming out until I get it in one shot that's just me zooming in uh, and then shooting it at 60 yards in one shot and that just like this as if I'm static hunting oh, it's just it's just crazy it just doesn't seem to miss unbelievable all right let's see if we can uh, do three out of three at 60 yards Two. You see, I think, you know, that's two out of two, and if I miss this, it's not the gun, it's me. The gun's way more accurate than I am. Three out of three. There you go, that's what I was saying. It's not exactly what I said before, it's not me zooming in and out, that's three on the trot. I just don't know what Tony's done to it. Other than what he's already told me, I know it's already said at the start, this new procedures and stuff they do, uh, which he hasn't told me. I'm not going to be nosy and obviously pry because he made it clear he, he, you know, he, don't, he don't want it to go out. But 60 yard, 3 out of 3 like that, just resting against this fence, which as you can see is not, you know, it's not rock solid, it's I don't know what he's done to it, it's just it's just different. It's one of them rifles, it's like a PCP, you know when you pick up a PCP like a good one, like Air Arms uh, Ultimate Sport F5, S510 I've got, or a HW100, you know, before you pull the trigger a lot of the time you're going to hit what you do, you're going to hit what you aim at I should say. This is the same, and I don't know what he's done to it, it's just incredible. The more I shoot it, the more it amazes me. Before we show you the section on hunting with the Imp Mark II, we wanted to talk about and answer some of the questions that we get from our subscribers from across the water in the USA. And these are usually in regards to the laws within the UK, in particular, in this case, England. Rabbits are seen as a pest within the UK and so can be shot all year round with no closed season. In regards to any birds that are shot, we are following the laws and the rules of the current March 2020 General Licence number 36. 
The land what we are shooting on is also working land containing fruit orchards, crop fields and stables and we are shooting with the full permission of the landowners. That bunny with 36 metres. It's almost 40 yards. Okay, so I had to do a little bit of a trick shot there. So I had to shoot through where the uh, glass is missing in the greenhouse. Hopefully you can see the rear end of him there, but I've just seen another rabbit come out somewhere in there. So where's that rabbit then, what I hit in the uh, disused greenhouse at 42, 43 yards? And as you saw on the camera, it was facing away from me, like that. You can see where the pellet's gone in, back of the head and come out this side of its eye. A really good shot placement for, by the uh, Imp Mark II. Okay, I've moved into a different position now. Obviously sat with my back against this tree protector made from a pallet. And to my front is an edge, so hopefully there'll be some bunnies coming out. Uh, 26 meters about 20, 28 and a half yards so there we go again then like 26 meters about 28 and a half yards straight over with a nice clean head shot uh, just walking up then on the one we got oh, look at blood in there in the ears yeah, nice shot placement. Yeah, pellet looks like it exited or it's gone through straight through. There's a couple then side by side. A brace of bunnies. Nice shot placement and over. A few kicks, but yeah, really nice. Down he goes. shot that was 32 meters about 35 yards just over 35 yards all well, that bunny I shot is down there still got to pick him up look. A 57 meter standing supported magpie in Mark II. There we go. That was a 51, so a 56 yard bunny in Mark II. This rifle is deadly, absolute deadly. Well, that was really good. So I saw that magpie, I stalked in. Uh, and I got him on the laser and he was 57 meters so on times nine that required four mil dots of old over or just over four mil dots actually slight bit over uh, no wind today absolute perfect conditions and that just dropped he heard it crack and dropped straight out of the tree so and then as that dropped a rabbit ran out of the bushes to the left so I laser out and he was 51 meters 
so 56 yards. So I'll just show you where I uh, shot that magpie and then that rabbit from. So I'll just turn the camera around. So this is an old stump here, or fence post, with ivy on. So I was resting with my hand against there. And the magpie on the top of that tree there, 57 metres. And then the uh, rabbit is just down there. Look, I think that magpie is probably going to uh, peck at him. So there's a magpie there, and he's, he's heading towards where the rabbit was. And, uh, another bunny at 51. Straight over, not far, he was only 19 metres. about that for a shot that was another 51 meters so 56 57 yards straight over headshot four mil dots rolled over and over he goes 51 meters so that's really good that's another 51 meter in mark 2 this is rabbit shooting with a spring rifle with PCP accuracy. It's unbelievable. Some of the uh, best rabbit shooting I've done with a Springer in years and years and years. So, uh, yeah, well up here, you can see with a smile. Great rifle. That was a nice shot then, we witnessed. 51 metres, 56, 57 yards ish. Bowled him straight over. There he is, look. Sweet shot. In Mark II. Another couple here. As you witnessed. Shot with In Mark II. Nice headshots. Well, folks, we're almost at the end of the field review now, and we're at the part of the review where I say my uh, final thoughts after testing the rifle. So people are going to say, what's the difference between the Mark I and the Mark II, shooting-wise? I would say the Imp Mark II, as soon as it's tuned, so not bedded in, has got the same recoil as an Imp Mark I, what's been fully bedded in. So as this beds in, it's probably going to need another 100 shots through it. It's going to be probably slightly less recoil than a bedded in Imp Mark I. The big difference for me, though, is the confidence you get with it. If you've ever had a PCP, a top-end one, and you know that when you pull the trigger your pellet's going to go exactly where you want and you're not going to miss and you pull the trigger and you hit the target almost every time this is one of those rifles but it's not PCP it's a spring rifle but the confidence I've had is like it was as if I'm shooting a PCP accurate so you saw it put three pellets almost on top of each other at 50 yards and that was in a, that was in a breeze as well and the spinners as well normally I wouldn't hit three out of three I said I think on the video after two I miss this it's it's me not the rifle and I went and hit it three times at 60 yards on the trot shows the confidence uh, and the accuracy of this rifle really 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 nice 
what I will do is after this bit I'll put uh, the contact details for Samwell so if you are interested uh, please give him a call I'll put an arrow going to uh, the telephone number so you can give him a call there probably will be a wait time and I suppose after the review goes out Tony's going to get absolutely stacks and stacks of calls people wanting to order one of these because I can't blame them because you know the camera don't lie and in this case when I aim at a target of a rabbit at 55 meters or 51 meters whatever I can't tell that rabbit that wild rabbit right when you when I pull this trigger and you hear a crack I want you to roll over and play dead because that don't work as we all know it only happens when we put the crosshair on the right place and we pull the trigger and we hit the rabbit in the head and it flips over exactly like you've seen multiple times in this field review and that's because this rifle is accurate so people will want to buy it so if you do want to buy one and you're seriously thinking about it you want to be quick and phone up because I should imagine Tony's list will be filling up quick for people putting orders in for these so the quicker you put it in the quicker you'll get it like I say I will put his uh, contact details in after this the scope on it is called a Hawk Fast Mount. It comes with a scope which is a 3x9x40 AO, so the adjustable objective, and it also comes with mounts. And you've got an adjustable ocular lens, I think it's called, at the back here, which focuses the crosshair, so you can get the crosshair exactly focused to how your eye is. And you can also focus what you're shooting at on the objective lens here, so everything becomes in focus with no parallax and it's only 69.95 for the scope and the mount so that's, you know, that's a bargain and what I will say is it doesn't lose its zero once I'd got this rifle zeroed in from the kneeling position which is what I've been shooting it's not missed a beat since and as you saw it's, it's hit everything and to be fair uh, the standing shots it's hit everything standing and are standing supported out to long distances and I think we're the only people on YouTube who are actually doing this so we've got people shooting PCPs at you know, maximum range and knocking rabbits over all day long with a PCP. There's nobody taking a, a rifle like this and filming themselves at 55, 56, 57 metres and knocking rabbits over as easy as we're doing with this imp. So, yeah, the proof is in the pudding. So, thanks for watching. Please look out for some more episodes. We've got some more hunting stuff coming and we've also got another Sandwell Field Sports review on another tuned, PC, uh, tuned spring rifle but this one's going to be a Gamo Hunter. So Tony realises that not everyone's got £425 to shell out for a tuned Imp Mark II but some people do want a Sandwell Field Sports tuned rifle uh, and they've had some really good testing and uh, results and Tony's come up with a Gamo Hunter 440 what he sent me I've had a few shots with it and at the minute it's looking sweet and it's uh, a lot cheaper than this so people who want a, a Sandal Field Sports tuned rifle will be able to get one soon uh, and hopefully I'll be showing you how good they are shortly as well so thanks for watching stay safe and we'll see you soon